Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. Welcome to Mastering On One Photo Raw 2018. In this video, we're going to take a look at the HDR function that's found in On One Photo Raw 2018. And for this demonstration, I have a bracketed set of images of a church. There are five images all spaced one stop apart, beginning with this image, which is two stops underexposed, this image one stop underexposed, this image properly exposed, this image one stop overexposed, and finally this image, which is two stops overexposed, and as you can see, unusable. You see it's very blurry. I shot in aperture priority mode. I had a set aperture for all five shots of f5.6, and I had a set ISO of 800. So because I was in aperture priority mode, my camera was choosing the shutter speed for each of the five shots. For this shot, in order to overexpose it two stops, it chose a very slow shutter speed of one-fifth of a second, and the shot is handheld, so you could see it's blurry, not usable at all. So I have to work with my other four images and that's okay. Usually what I do now, every photographer is different and there's no right or wrong way to do this. But usually what I do is I, I shoot a set of five bracketed images one stop apart, but I find that I most often will only choose three of the images to create my HDR image with, and usually it will be the one that's in the middle, the one that is properly exposed, the one that is two stops underexposed, and sometimes the one that is two stops overexposed or the one that is one stop overexposed. It depends, because sometimes the bright ones I find I don't need, so I might just use some of the darker ones instead. So it really depends on the scene and really depends, I guess, on my mood when it really comes down to it, what I'm trying to achieve. So the best way for you is just experiment, see what's what works best for you. I do recommend that you shoot a larger bracket of five images, at least maybe seven, but usually at five. And that way you'll have the images available to you if you decide you want to use all five or if you want to use the one that is two two stops overexposed and the one that is two stops underexposed, you'll have them. So really that's up to you. Now for this demonstration, I mentioned that this one that is two stops overexposed is unusable. I'm going to just use the other four. So I'm going to take all four of them over into On One Photo Raw HDR. Now to do that, we're going to click on the first one that's in the row here. And I'm going to hold the shift key in and click on the last one. So I have those four selected. Then I'm going to go over to the right-hand panel, this little strip of, of functions, and there's HDR right there. I'm going to click on that, and you're going to see that a little progress box pops up, and it's actually going to merge the image and give us a preview. And this goes relatively quickly. And you can see we have a preview of our merged HDR image. And if we look over at the film strip at the bottom, you'll notice that one is selected. And it has a check mark. They all have check marks, but this also has this little like um, diaphragm or aperture showing. And that shows EV 0.0. .0. So on one says that this of your four images, this is the image that at least the camera believed was properly exposed. If you don't think that's true, you could pick a different image. So if I think actually that let's say this one to the right that currently says EV 1.0 is the one that is properly exposed. All I need to do is turn on, turn, make it so by clicking on that little circle. Now you'll see that little aperture sign or little diaphragm is on this one. And this says EV 0.0 .0, and this one now says EV minus 1.0. So everything changed. Now, Usually, on one is correct in picking the correct image that is, quote, properly exposed. So I will go back to the way it was and click on that one because you could see now it's EV 0.0 .0 and everything moved to the correct point of where it was in my sequence that I actually shot. So that'll work out well. 
To tell you the truth, you could pick whatever you want. Usually your final HDR image, doesn't, it doesn't do anything to it. It's going to look the same. Um, it's really mainly for your reference up here. But I like where it is, so we're good to go. Now above that is a little strip of info that we have to go over. You'll see right here is deghosting, and by default that will be on medium. Deghosting happens, or ghosting happens, usually if you take a shot outside and it's a little windy out and you have like trees moving, people moving, grasses moving, things like that. Anything that could have been moving between your sequence of shots will cause ghosting. There's an algorithm in on one's HDR software that will eliminate ghosting. Well, how hard do you want to work at it? By default, I mentioned it's on medium, but you could have it totally off. So if your camera was on a tripod indoors and you're sure nothing moved in the scene, have it off and your processing will go very quickly. On the other hand, if you were outside in a very windy day and there were a lot of people moving around, trees were moving in the breeze, grass was moving in the breeze, have it on very high. So it helps eliminate the ghosting. Your processing, though, will go much slower. It takes longer to get rid of the ghosting. And by default, usually medium works pretty well. Now this, I was inside the church. I did not use a tripod, though, so my camera was handheld. So the camera obviously moved a little. There's not really going to be a lot of ghosting. Usually camera movement won't cause ghosting, but you'll see that we could view the ghosting or where there is going to be a ghosting issue in your image by just clicking on this little checkbox. And whatever is in your image that will be ghosting during the HDR process will show up in red. And you'll see, I'm going to click it on and off, and I'd like you to look at this window frame over here. And I'm going to click it off, and you can see the red went away. I'm going to click it on, and you can see the red came back. And you can see throughout, mainly in the windows a little bit, you'll see that there's a little ghosting. So it's nothing major and nothing really to get worried about. Whether or not you have this checkbox checked or not will not uh, affect the final outcome. That's just there to show you where ghosting is. As far as actually eliminating the ghosting, on one ignores this check mark. What it's looking at is the amount of deghosting you want to do. Low, medium, high, very high, or off. And I'm, by default, I'll leave it on medium. We're good to go. Now, you'll notice when we came in here, it actually got processed a little. And I didn't mention, I should have mentioned at the beginning, that those four raw images that I sent into On One Photo Raw 2018's HDR merge were not processed at all. I didn't do anything to those images. So right out of camera, I didn't do a thing. All of a sudden, I did this HDR merge, and you could see it's processed. And if you look over here at the right-hand panel, you'll see there's a tone and, and color panel here and some auto adjustments were done. That's because if you look at this drop down, it has natural auto. So it did natural or it did auto adjustments. If I put it on natural, you'll notice it dimmed and no adjustments were done and the tone and color is straight down the middle. So nothing was done. So it's really up to you. Do you want to just merge them and then process it totally later? If that's the case, pick natural. On the other hand, if you want that tone and color done for you ahead of time, and then when we're done, we could process it some more, put it on natural auto. There are two other choices, surreal, which kind of gives it this kind of surreal. It's not, as you can see, it's not very heavy. It's kind of an, that HDR surreal look. And you can see because it's just surreal, nothing was done here at all. If you look over at the HDR look tab, you could see that there's some sliders moved over there. So that's given us that kind of surreal look. Now we'll go to the drop down again, there's surreal auto. So it's giving us our auto tone adjustments and some HDR adjustments as well. And that actually looks pretty good. And I kind of like that surreal auto because this church, when you're in it, it's very bright and airy. And that's what it looks like, just like this. My images that I took seemed a lot darker than what the church really was. So this actually better represents what that church was like inside. So you could come in and use the drop down to get what you want. If you don't like any of the drop downs, you could probably put it on natural, I'd say, and then come in here and just manually adjust these sliders any way you want. 
on either of the two tabs, tone and color or HDR look. Or you could come in and pick one like natural auto or let's, in my case, surreal auto, which I kind of liked. And then I could come in here and readjust any of these. Um, let's say I like, uh, I just want my black point a little lower so I can move that up down a little bit. I want to add a little more structure to it. And uh, the color temperature I could sample, I think auto as shot was fine. So anything like that, I could come in here and readjust these and that goes for the HDR look tab as well. I could come in here and go to natural, surreal, glow. I don't like glow usually. Um, I kind of like that surreal look and the natural look. Let's go with the surreal look, all right, just for the sake of this demonstration. And when you're satisfied that you have your preview looking like you want your final HDR image to at least look like to begin with. Now, we could do more processing after this because there's a drop down here. Are we going to open in the develop module, the effects module, or return to the browse module? I'm going to choose to open up in the develop module. And to the left of that, you'll see there's a little align check mark box. If you handheld your images, like I did this sequence of images, definitely make sure that's checked. It's going to take longer for your HDR to be created, but it will align everything at the pixel level so you won't have any blurring or ghosting at all because of misaligned images. On the other hand, if you shot with a tripod, you may not have to check this box and your merge will go quicker. But I've been guilty of this. I have thought my tripod didn't move one bit. But when I got those images into an HDR program, I had a tiny bit of blur and ghosting because somehow that tripod moved very slightly between shots. So it doesn't hurt to check this box. It's just going to make your merge go a little longer. So obviously I need to check it for this case because I handheld these four shots. I'm going to open up in the develop module as I mentioned, and it's showing I'm going to use four of four photos in this merge. If I didn't want to use one, you could see there's a little check box right there. I could uncheck it. And then I'm, that means I'm going to use three of four. So you could uncheck or check at this point and add or remove any images into the merge. And I'm going to use all four. So I'm going to keep them all. And I like my adjustments. I'm going to do some more adjustments in a minute. When it's done, it's going to open in the develop module. So I'm going to save it. So I'm going to go over here in the lower right hand corner and click save. Now the merge does take a little bit, usually around a minute. So I'm going to pause the video. And then when we resume the video, we'll be in the develop module with our HDR image. Okay, our merge is done and we opened up in the develop module. And I would say that it took about 45 seconds for that merge to occur from the point where I stopped talking a second ago. So about 45 seconds to get to this point. And you can see now the tone and color is opened up and it has the same adjustments we already did in our merge preview. So those are all done. So you could come in here and do anything you need to do. The image looks a tiny bit crooked. It's a little kind of deceptive. If you look at the tile down here, this looks perfectly perpendicular, or I'm sorry, perfectly parallel to the bottom of the image. So it looks kind of straight there, but it does look like the image is tilted to the right a little bit. So you could open up the crop tool and then you could take your cursor and just come off the image a little bit till you get that little circle right there. And then you could click with the left mouse button and maybe drag it until it's perfectly straight, which might be right around there. It's hard to say. There's so many different lines in the image and lines going diagonal and straight. So it's sometimes difficult to make sure that you have the image straight because it might look straight at the bottom, but it's crooked at the top or vice versa. Also, I had an email from one of my viewers and they mentioned how I often straighten an image when I come off the image a little bit and I get that little semicircle right there. They could not get their version, their Windows version of on one to do that with the crop tool. And the reason why he ended up finding out is because he had to upgrade his, his uh, graphics driver. So if you're finding that you're not able to get this uh, functionality with a Windows PC, um, maybe you have to upgrade your Windows graphics driver 
in order for that to begin wick working. And then when you click with the left mouse button and start dragging, you get that tight grid. He wasn't getting that either. So that might be an issue I thought I'd just mention. So I'm going to say that that's kind of straight. Again, it's very difficult to tell because sometimes it looks straight one way and then it's crooked the other way. And you could be there for hours. So we'll go back to view mode. But you could process it from this point on as though it's a regular image. You could get, you know, like a curves adjustment and you could, you know, add a little bit of contrast with the curves if you want. You could bring it over to the effects module. Do whatever you need to do. You could do right here. Go to a colors adjustment. Um, overall, I don't know. You could pick a preset. I don't know. I don't know why I picked that. But anyway, you could pick anything. You could process it from this point on. It's just a normal image. If we look at grid view, or we go back, I'm sorry, to the browse module, and then look at grid view, you could see it's right here. And here's our four images that we used. And there is our original one that was, actually that one was one stop underexposed. There's our one that is EV0. So you could see how the HDR process helps really uh, rein in the highlights where it's blown out in the glass and open up the shadows where you can't see any detail in the shadows or limited detail in the shadows. That's the HDR process does a pretty good job for that. Now, as I look at that, that's a little bit too HDR-y for me, but I think it worked well for this demonstration to show you how everything works. And I really think the HDR functionality that's in on One Photo Raw 2018 is underrated. Uh, it really does a great job. So thank you, everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.